Bienvenue à Français 2, level 2 of your study of French. Now this particular course is really only going to go through uh, the first several units of the French 2 book and then we will finish that book in French 3. The reason being is because during my 10 years of teaching this during high school, that we discovered that this book is really, really intensive and in order for you to really concrete the ideas into your mind and really be able to solidify them and work with them well, it takes a little bit longer because there is so much information packed in here. Uh, the other good thing is you won't have to buy the level 3 book, um, so that helps out too if you decide to go on with your study of French for Francais 3. Now, we will also be incorporating some outside activities, some outside readings. I'm going to be asking you to watch a film or so. Um, so it's going to be not just in the book this time. French one was very much in the book and it, it really has to be because it's more of a getting you ready and you, you have to start on a very firm foundation. Now we can kind of branch out a little bit. Um, you're going to see some repeat of French one. Basically the first unit is is a repeat of everything that you learned in French 1. But I'm going to break this unit down into lesson A, B, and C because um, I really, really want to make sure that you are in fact ready to go on to uh, the more complex stuff because it, it hits as soon as we get into Unité 2. So, um, some of the videos that you will need to watch are, are just going to be the ones that we used in French ones. So, for instance, I'm not really going to go back over time or any of that stuff. Just, just go back and watch those videos if you need to. Also, in the back of your book, uh, you have the appendix starting on page hmm, uh, 482. Um, and so this is a great reference for you when we begin to learn new stuff or if you need to go back and relook at some older stuff that you've learned. Numbers are in there, lots of conjugations, all kind, most of the grammar formulas. So that's a really, really helpful part of the book. The other thing that I'm going to be doing with you in this uh, particular unit and possibly in the future ones is uh, work through a, a few of the workbook um, activities with you, maybe just the first couple on each page, just so I can make sure that, that, that you're okay and you're comfortable doing it. So um, obviously you're going to recognize all of this, hopefully. Uh, this is your possessive adjective chart and then over here are your regular conjugations of verbs. Uh, and I just want to briefly re review these really quickly with you. So for an ER verb, um, well as you remember, all verbs in French have uh, their infinitive endings are either ER, IR, or RE. And these in the regular form follow a particular pattern. Now once you get into irregular verbs like avoir, aller, faire, mettre, prendre, uh, and whichever ones else you can remember, those are going to be a little bit different. But for the most part, ER verbs, IR verbs, and RE verbs will follow this pattern. Now if you remember correctly, you take off the ending, the infinitive ending, and then you add your uh, ending based on your subject pronoun. So for an ER verb, for je, you're going to take off the ER and add E. For tu, it's ES. For il, il, on, on, it is E. For nu, it is ONS. For vu, it is EZ. And for il and L, plural, it's ENT. And the song that you remember with this is E, E, S, E, O, N, S, E, Z, E, N, T. And then for an IR verb, same process, regular IR verb in the present tense, you take off the IR and you're going to add your ending accordingly. So for je, you would add IS. For tu, it's also IS. For il, elle, or on, or qui, it's IT. For nu, it is ISS, ONS. Vu, ISS, EZ. And il and elle, ISS, ENT. This one also has a song. I-S-I-S-I-T, I-S-S-O-N-S, I-S-S-E-Z, I-S-S-E-N-T. Now, for your R-E verb, uh, there is no song that I have learned yet, so if you think of one, please email me and let me know. Um, but again, it's the same process. Take off the R-E and then add the ending according to your subject pronoun. For je, S, for tu, S, 
For Il L and Ult, there is no ending. It's just whatever that stem was after you took off that RE. For Nu, it is O and S. For Vu, it is E Z. And for Il and L, plural, it is E N T. Now, if you would like to see these uh, used a little more, uh, then you can also, once again, look in the back of your book uh, on page 487, 487, and you can see the conjugation of parler, which is to speak, finir, which is to finish, and perdre, which means to lose. Um, so those are done for you. Now, the possessive adjective chart. As you remember, everything in... French, every noun, every person, place, or thing has gender. And um, one of the theories is that, you know, French is a really, really old language, and um, based on whatever god or goddess inhabited that particular object or ruled over that object or person or place, then that was the gender that that, that eventually became. So, um, and if you remember, the best way to remember gender is to learn the indefinite article with any noun. So for instance, um, when you are learning the word for fleur, don't just know that fleur means flower. Memorize it as une fleur. And oh, une, yeah, yeah, yeah. Une is feminine. If you remember, un is masculine, une is feminine, and de is plural. Those are the indefinite articles, meaning a or an or some. Um, so memorize your indefinite articles when you are memorizing a noun and it will just, it will help you. you you'll automatically, it, trust me, you'll remember it much, much more easily that way. Um, also, as a general rule, most nouns that end in E are feminine, not always. Fleur, does not, F-L-E-U-R, does not end in an E, but it is feminine. Now, the way you remember that, because you remember, oh, une fleur. So it, it'll come back. But generally, nouns that end in E are feminine. So, um, nouns have to match the adjective in both number and gender. So, if a noun is feminine, the adjective has to be feminine. If the noun is plural, the adjective has to be plural. Okay? So, uh, the possessive adjective chart means that whatever noun this is working with, then that is going to have to match in both number, singular, plural, or gender, and gender, masculine or feminine. Okay? So, if I needed the, if I was talking about something that was masculine, it doesn't matter that I am a girl, it's whatever I am talking about. So, for instance, the book. Book is masculine. A notebook is masculine, even though L-I-V-R-E, livre, ends in an E, I know that this is masculine because I memorized it as un livre, okay? And un, U-N, is masculine. So, un livre. So, if I wanted to talk about my book, even though I am a girl, book is masculine. So, I look for the masculine way to say my. The masculine way to say my is mon. So, if I wanted to talk about my book, then I would say and I'll use blue, since it's masculine. Mon livre. Okay, even though I am a girl. It's the object that's being talked about. But what if I had two books? Now the books are plural, right? So, not I am not plural. <laughs> I'm, there's just one of me, thank God for that. Alright, but the books are plural. So, since the books are plural, I need to find out the plural way to say my. So, I'm going to come over here on my little chart. Plural, my, me. So, if I was talking about my books, first off, I would have to make it plural, and generally you add an S, and I would say me, me livre. All right? So, um, this is the possessive adjective chart. I just wanted to go over it with you again, just to make sure that you've got it. So, mon, ma, me, ton, ta, te, son, sa, se, notre, notre, no, votre, votre, vos, leur, leur, leur. Okay? And if you look at it, all the plurals have S's on it. That's really, really convenient. And then, uh, once you get into the plural 
this part of the plural, like our or your or y'all's, right, or their, uh, these are the same. And so you remember, our lady, notre dame, okay? So this one's really easy because you don't have to remember, oh, is it masculine or feminine? And that's why a lot of people will, will use these in conversation because it's easier to just go, oh, I don't have to worry about the gender. I can just use this, right? Also, don't forget, these correspond to subject pronouns. Um, the subject pronouns, as we went over them again, je, tu, il, elle, or on, nous, vous, il, and elle. Now, although it doesn't matter what the subject is, it's what you're talking about, it's still kind of helpful to think of it in that, in that way to an extent. Okay? Um, so, there's one other trick to this chart. And if you remember, it is that this one, this one, and this one are used when you are talking about a noun that begins with a vowel. So you use this when you are doing singular before a vowel, okay? So, let's work through this and see if we can't figure this out. I'm going to use this color. I hope, does it work? Okay. All right, frère. Frère is brother. If I'm talking about my brother, am I going to use mon or ma? I'm a girl, but it doesn't matter. My brother is a boy. So I, it's got to be what it's talking about, so mon. So I would use mon frère. What about sœur? Sœur is the word for sister. Since I am a girl, it doesn't matter. It matters that my sister is a girl. So the feminine way to say my is ma, ma sœur. What if I was talking about your hat? And I'm not going to use the vu form. I'm, I'm talking about you too. Not you vu, you too. Alright? So, if I'm saying it's your hat, chapeau. Oh, goodness. Oh, that's right. I remembered a chapeau. It's not un chapeau. It's a chapeau. A is masculine. So the masculine way to say your, when I'm talking about to, you, right, is ton. Now, if you look at this word for chapeau, it's got an X on it. And that is because the plural form for when, it, when something ends in E-A-U or even A-U, you don't add an S, you add an X. So generally plurals end in S, but not always, okay? So this lets me know that it's plural because it has that X ending. And so I want to say your hats. And I'm talking about two, not vu, but two. So, since it's plural and I'm talking about your, it's going to be te. Te chapeau. Okay? And this is really important also because you can't hear this X. So, the way that you listen for the plural is actually in the word before it, not at the end of it. In, in English, the book, the books. I hear that S at the end of books, right? In French, Hearing the plural is actually the word before it. Listen, ton chapeau, te chapeau. Chapeau sounded the same. It was the ton that let me know it was singular, or the te that let me know that it was plural. Okay? What about anorak? Anorak is this, like a ski jacket, right? Anorak happens to begin with a vowel. Now, it doesn't matter if, it's, if it were feminine or plural, I mean feminine or singular, Mm, feminine or masculine, it wouldn't matter. It's the fact that it is singular and whatever I'm using goes before a vowel. So singular before a vowel. Which one am I going to use? Let's say I wanted to say it was her hat. Well, it's his or her. I'm sorry, ski jacket. Alright, his or her ski jacket. The ski jacket happens to be masculine, but it begins with a vowel, and that's what I've got to watch. Masculine his or her before a vowel, son and a rack. What about here? Notice, this one ends in an S. It's going to sound exactly the same, and a rack, and a rack, all right? But, this happens to begin with a vowel, so am I going to use son? No. I'm going to use say. 
Why? Because it's plural. And that's what I've got to watch out for. Ces anorak. Once again, you hear the plural before, not at the end. Son anorak. Ces anorak. Alright? So, hopefully this has kind of brought you back. It's hopefully slowly coming back. I know, I know it's going to be a little difficult um, to get it back. And again, that's why I'm going to go a little slower through Unit 1 than than I would like to, but uh, I think it's best for you to do that. So Unit 1, like I said, we're actually going to break into three three different lessons, ah, be, and se. Alright, so if you look on your um, in your workbook, uh, or however you're doing that, um, Activity 1 is very, very simple. It's just the conjugation of ER verbs. It's really based on vocabulary. Do you know what arrive means? If you know what arrive means, then you know that Jérôme arrive. Jeremy is the one arriving, right? Um, on less on uh, activity three, lesson A. Now here, what they're asking you to do is find uh, your subject over on the left-hand column, à, à droit, mm -mm, à gauche, and then um, conjugate the verb in the right-hand column, a go, a doi, into uh, to the proper format. So let's let's just work through one of those really quickly. Uh, they did one for you. Now, if you do not know cursive, uh, you just you're going to have to learn. And I'm not teaching you cursive, so uh, find somebody to do it or or, or look on the internet. I'd. It, you need to learn cursive. I don't care what anybody tells you. You need to learn cursive. So, um, all right. So let's look at number two. Ton petit frère. Now, ton petit frère. Now, if you remember, adjectives generally go after the noun they modify, right? But some of them, if they happen to deal with beauty, age, goodness, or size, then they go before the noun. Beauty meaning uh, beau or belle, um, age meaning vieux or nouveau, and then uh, goodness is um, bon or mauvais, and then size is petit or long, right? Uh, or court, cool, right? So, Petit happens to be one of those that goes before. Now, if this was, uh, I'll, I'll, we'll just go with this. So, this is literally your small brother, okay? And so let's find over here, let's, uh, who is he waiting for? Let's say that he is waiting on, he's probably going to be waiting on, Well, I don't know who he's going to be waiting on. Barney. He's probably going to be waiting on Barney because he's a little kid. So, the, the verb that we're working with here is attendre. Now, attendre ends in an R-E, right? So, attendre also happens to be a regular R-E verb. So, let's look back over here. Since my little brother, if he were going to act like a pronoun, I had just told you the answer. It would act like he. So you can think of this as he, right? So, what is the conjugation of an re verb for he? The ending, there isn't one. So when I conjugate attendre, attendre means to wait for. The for is already included in it, right? So it would be j'attends, with an s, to attend, with an S, il, elle, or on, attend, and what's my ending? There isn't one. Nous attendons, vous attendez, with an EZ, cursive, you get used to it, and then il and elle attend, with an ENT. And those are my endings right there. S, S, nothing. O and S, E, Z, E, N, T. Since my little brother is going to act like he, 
I would use A-T-T-E-N-D. So, ton petit frère, il attend Barney. Right? So, your little brother, he waits for Barney. Now, let's just say, it's not in this exercise, but let's just say it wasn't your little brother. Let's say it was your little sister. All right? Let's switch it out a little bit. Since it, obviously, I'm not going to use frere, because that means brother. It's where frere Jacques comes from, brother John. So it'd be sur, right? Now this actually wouldn't change, because this is il or elle. So the verb would stay the same, she waits for. But petit, that was the masculine way to say petit. How do I make that feminine, do you remember? Generally, you just add an e, and in this case, that is exactly what you do. Ton is used for the masculine word to say your. The feminine way to say it, do you remember? Ta. So if I were saying your little sister is waiting for Barney, then I would say ta petite sur à ton Barney. All right? And because I added that e, I'm going to pronounce that last uh, consonant right before it. Right? So this was petit. This is petite. Right? Now, do you remember which letters you actually say at the end of a word in French? Careful. If you're careful how you pronounce it, the letters that you generally almost always pronounce when they're at the end of a word are C, R, F, and L. If those are not the last letters uh, in the word, then chances are you're not going to pronounce that last letter. Okay? So, for instance, fleur, you, you said it because it was a ur. But, um, actually none of these are good, good examples. <laughs> That's fabulous. Uh, let's try this one. It's not avion, it's avion. Remember? Because that N has that on sound at the end. So you didn't really pronounce it, right? Um, but if I had said something like, um, something that ends in an E, uh, hmm. We're just not even going to get there. But, uh, so those are generally the letters that you pronounce at the end of a word. So, hopefully that will get you started back into French. Let's do a couple of more. Um, let's go to lesson, uh, or activity 3B. And let's work that one out as well. So, the verbs that we are working with here, you're noticing all end in ER. Danser, nager, jouer, arriver, inviter, parler, arriver, and étudier. Right? Those all in an ER, they are regular ER verbs. So they are going to use this pattern. Now, I want to use the word nager. The reason being is because uh, nager happens to end, when you take off the ER, the stem ends in G. Okay? And if you remember, that one is a little bit different, right? So for instance, je nage, makes sense. Tu nage, all right? You're swimming, you swim, you are swimming. Il, elle, on nage. He, she, one swims, he, she, one is swimming. The is and the are and the am, those are included in the word. You do not need that conjugation of etra for that already in there. Don't mess that up. It's very easy to mess that up. Please don't. All right. New. We're going to come back to this one. Vous nagez and il and elle nage. Okay. If you notice every single one of these, the endings begin or are e. Okay. And because of that, this G is going to be pronounced J, right? But if I were to just add O and S to this, I get Nagon. Nagon does not sound French. It's not, right? So if the stem ends in G, in other words, once I take off that ER, if the stem ends in G, in, for the new form, you add an E right here. Do you remember that? 
So for, for nu, if the stem ends in G, add E. For nu, if the stem ends in G, add E, O and S. And now I get nageon, all right? And that, so don't forget that one, all right? So now let me work one with you really quickly. Um, at a party, are they going to swim? Maybe. I don't know. Let's say that you're, uh, we're back to your little brother. Let's go with, um, let's go with number nine, moi. Moi. All right. So, moi means me. And I'm going to say that me, I swim. So, moi, je nage. Great. But do you know what I don't do at a party? Etudier. Etudier means to study. And look at etudier. It's got an accent mark on the front of it. The accent mark is the accent aigu. Do you remember? Aigu, grave, trema, circumflex, or house, right? And then the one that goes on the C is called a cédille. All right? Now, if I wanted to say that I do not study, do you remember how to say not? You put ne pas around the conjugated verb. Ne pas around the conjugated verb. So if I wanted to say I do not study, if I said I did study, it would be Would that be it? Look at it. Do you remember that when for those small little words like je, ne, le, de, you take off that e if it, or it's next to a vowel and you make it an apostrophe. So instead of je étudie, it is j'étudie, right? So what's my conjugated verb? Well, je is a subject pronoun. A conjugated verb means I've taken off one of the infinitive endings and I've manipulated it to match the subject pronoun. And so, this is my conjugated verb, a to d. So, if ne pas goes around the conjugated verb, then it would go right there. So, I would say ne et pas. But guess what? Now I've got to fix it again, right? Because I can't have that je apostrophe in front of this, and I can't have this e in front of that. So now it reverts back almost to what it was. Watch. Now we're going to say je ne du pas. Okay? So it went back out because it was no longer against a vowel, but since this one was, then that one had to be taken off and we had to put the apostrophe. So, moi je nage, me I swim, je ne te dis pas, I don't study à la boom at a party, right? Let's work with this one more time. Let's look at the word manger. Manger looks like the word manger. Manger is a feeding trough, and manger means to eat, all right? So if I wanted to say, we are eating pizza, or we are eating ice cream, right? Then I would say, nous, since the stem ends in G, add E for nous, mangeons la glace. Okay, nous mangeons la glace. We are eating, or we eat, the ice cream. Now the reason I used la here is because la is the feminine way to say the. Remember, you have le, la, and le. Masculine, feminine, plural. Le, la, le, to say the. For uh, the word to say a, a or an was a, un, or de, okay? And this was, again, masculine, singular, I'm sorry, masculine, feminine, singular, plural, all right? And this was for the, all right? So the masculine singular way to say a or an is a, 
The feminine singular way to say a or an is un. You can't say a plural, but you can say some, which is de. Right? These are indefinite articles. It's not, it's not for sure what you're, which one you're talking about. It's indefinite. I don't know which one, just a or some. Right? The definite articles are definitely, you know which one. It's not a pen, it's the pen. Okay? Definitely this one. Right? So, the masculine singular way.